Alright, welcome back to a new one on this channel and on this one we need to talk about the beat delay. This is a very straightforward delay but not so much when we get to the ping pong section. The idea of this guide is to show you how this works, it's not a review of the plugin or the effect. Now I've got a Mai Tai synth and I'm standing on a default preset so you can get the same and if I play my synth it's gonna sound like this. And notice that the source and the, out, uh, the output is mono, everything is mono. So depending on what you want to do, you can disregard the whole modulation section and just use the color, the output and the options that you have right here. Now you get the most basic options. Now this is a beat delay, so by default it's going to be synced to whatever tempo you're using on your DAW. So that's why you get beats. So if I change changing the bits, it will change, you know, the timing. All right. So then the other most common option that you get is the feedback, no feedback, it will result in, you know, just a very short uh, repetition. And notice that we don't get one single repetition, we get two. And this is because of the options that we have right here. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this in a minute. But again, going all the way up in feedback is gonna give you more feedback until maybe if you go all the way up, you're gonna get it. And notice that it doesn't go crazy because this is the digital delay, it's not a tape delay emulation. Right? It's pretty controlled. Okay. So again, that's the feedback. Now the only thing that you get is the offset. So by default, it's uh, you're locked into subdivisions. So with the offset, you can offset the timings of whatever is that you're using right here. Again, it's you're just offsetting. And you can offset it by 30 milliseconds up or, you know, 30 milliseconds before, let's say. But again, is an offset, this works uh, with whatever you have right here. Now, then you have the color section. Now, this doesn't give you color, it's not a saturation unit. And you have a low cut and a high cut. So the only thing that you're doing is you're chopping the lows and you're chopping the highs. Right, in this case, we're not doing anything, but if I wanted to chop them down, we, we should be getting pretty darker repetitions. And if I go up in the mix, we can really hear that we are cutting them, right? Super narrow and brighter, right? Right, so I'm gonna go maybe to 50% of the mix and I'm gonna go all the way down in feedback. And if I play one single note, what is it? We should be getting one repetition, but we get two. Why the F is this happening? Well, all of this is because the options that we have right here. If we go to the, the punk factor, we have some options and notice it says dotted right here. So the punk factor, what it does, it will multiply the repetitions and it does it in different subdivisions. The thing is that the main nature of this section is being a ping pong. So it's kind of a, let's say duplicating it. And we are getting right now a one four, but we are, we are getting a dotted, right? This is what we get. Now, if I go to some other options like same, now we get, you know, what we should be getting on a standard, a standard delay, which is one repetition with whatever timing that we're using right here. One single repetition. Now, the other ones will do different things because they are have different, you know, divisions. So if I go to this one, notice it sounds way different. Dot it which is what we get by default. And that is a, the rhythm is different because, you know, we, have, we are using a different thing. If you want to start the delay, just go to same. But if you want some, you know, movement or something else, you can go to the other options. We can go to double. That is super slower, super slow. And we can even go to half. So this is cool because now we know how to use it. But when you open the plugin, uh, first it's a little bit confusing, right? Because you were choosing the beat right here. And if you, uh, you know, disregard the section is, is maybe not what you want. You will need to manually go to same to get whatever you're doing right here or not. Or maybe just, you know, a change to something else. And this is why this is useful because you might be using the same. And if you don't like it, you can quickly go right here and just change it to something else and, you know, get get a different a different flavor. That's, you know, the purpose. Now, this is no fun do, using it like this. It's going to be a little bit more fun when we go up in feedback. So if I play it, if I go to maybe, I don't know, something else, maybe uh, going to go to 
double, which is going to be slower. Alright, so if I go to half, it's pretty much the same, but you know, you can quickly change between, you know, different factors and just get something else. That's, again, the plan of this Pong factor option. So, Alright, so this is, you know, one part of the equation. Uh, then we have the other side, which is going to be the ping pong. So for now, I'm just going to go and stand on dotted and feedback all the way down. Now, when I play this, it's super mono, right? Everything is super mono because my synthesizer is mono. So now, if I go to the ping pong, right now it's off. So it works when it's on sum or two CH, which is channel. So off, it means that whatever it is that we are doing, whatever it is that we are inputting to this, this playing, uh, the delay is getting it, you know, but it's not getting ping ponged. That's, the, that's what it's doing. So uh, when I go to sum, it will do the ping pong. And now notice that it's opening and it's a st stereo. It's going from left to right. Right, so now we are getting that ping pong effect that we want. Now the width control is going to still go all the way down if we want to keep it on mono, but if we want to go, uh, go all the way up, we're going to make it full stereo. Right, so that's how it works. If you want to, you know, make it super wide, go all the way up on this one. So if I play a note, it's going to be... First, it's going to start in the left, the ping pong effect is going to start the left, and then it's going to play the right. So center, left, right. And we can, you know, clearly see it on the vector scope. Left, center, left and right. There we go. So then you have the swap. So the swap is going to, you know, swap it. Uh, click it. When it's in A volt, it's going to do the opposite. First, it's going to be center, then right, and then left. If I swap it. So you can, again, just quickly change where you want it to be. All right, so my synth, the one I'm using, is completely mono. So if you have a stereo signal or stereo input, maybe, you know, some crazy stereo moving from left to right, before I go to the delay, the delay is going to sum the left and the right channel, and then it's going to delay it. This is why it's sum. So if you have a stereo track, this delay, it will, you know, mono whatever source that you're trying to delay and then it's going to delay it. So the repetitions are going to be a little bit more consistent because it's summing everything to mono and then it, you know, it output, outputs the ping pong effect. And this is, again, something really normal. Input goes in, converts to mono, and then the feedback, monoized, you know, the monoized version is going to uh, delay it and it's going to come out as a ping pong, right? This is what we are doing right now. Now, my synthesizer is mono, so it, there's no, it just makes no difference at all. Now, the two channel, what it does is going to grab the stereo signal if you have something stereo, and then it's going to delay the left with whatever information you have in the left, and then the right with whatever is going on in the right. Now, that's why it's two channels, right? It's delaying the two channels and not monoizing the left and the right into a mono signal and then delaying it. Now, I'm going to be putting this to a test. Now, remember, my synthesizer is mono, so I'm going to bring a dual pan. Now, the tool, the dual pan, what it does is going to uh, take whatever signal that you have, you have left and right, and I'm going to be grabbing my synthesizer and pushing everything to the left. Now, if I turn off the delay and play it, we only get a signal from the left channel, right? So my synthesizer is only outputting information on the left. So what happens if I grab that signal and uh, process this with the delay? So we are using two channels, and remember, we only have a, a sound in the left side. That's our input signal. If I play synth, that is what happens. So the delay is going to take that sound that we have in the left, and the repetition only happens in the right, right? So when I play it, the left is my synthesizer, and the right is going to be, you know, the wet signal, the delayed signal. So now we know that it's working on two channels. If I go to sum and I play it, notice, that, notice it's a little bit different. It's going to be in the left first, and then, since everything is monoized, it's going to be playing in the left and then in the right. Right? So now we get three repetitions and not one. In this case, we get one. Now, why do we get one, right? Why the other repetition is hidden? Now, remember that the two channels takes the left, takes the right. Now, in the right channel of the the, uh, the input, you know, on our synthesizer, we have nothing because we are just using the left channel. So it has nothing to grab and create a delay or re a re repeat. 
So if I narrow the width, we are going to be getting it. That is that we get it. But of course, we are making it smaller. We get the original signal in the left. And then we get the ping pong. Mostly, you know, closer to the center. But we are getting it. Also notice that one of the repetitions is stronger and the other one is not. And this is because we are just feeding the left channel and not the right channel. Now I'm showing all of this to you and make it, you know, very analytical because I want you to understand what's going on right here when you use two channels. So whatever stereo source that you have is going to take the left and the right and it's going to be processing that in a different way than the sum. And it's something that you should be aware when you use this plugging. So we are still inputting something from the left. The synthesizer is all the way panned to the left. So if I turn this on, another thing that you get is going to be the in pan. I'm going to go all the way up on the width. And we know that when we play it, we only get one repetition in the right. So the in pan, what it does is going to let you decide what the plugging or the delay should be listening, which, you know, source the left and the right. And the main purpose of this is that you can offset the left or listen a little bit more to the right or listen a little bit more to left and then process it. Right now, we are just getting left and then we delay right. But if I go to the in pan and I go all the way to the right, remember, we are inputting only a signal only from the left channel with my synthesizer. And we are telling the plugging or the uh, effect to only listen to the right channel. So when I play something, nothing gets delayed because there's nothing on that channel. Now, if I go to the other side, the delay is going to be pretty loud because we are taking everything and putting it, you know, on the right side. Now, if I make a, if I go down in the width so we can see both sources, maybe moving the pan, it's going to be changing a little bit of, you know, how the repetitions are going to be played out. Notice that they're less intense because we are getting less signal. So the purpose of the in pan is that you can decide which source you want to process, right? A little bit more. And if you have a source that it's maybe uh, a little bit more, a little bit stronger on the left and a little bit less in the right, well, with the in pan, you can balance everything and just, you know, uh, get a, you know, a more uh, balanced delayed signal. All right. So my synthesizer is mono. I'm going to go all the way up on width. I'm going to choose same just to show you how this works. And then I'm going to go to two channels. Remember my signal is mono. We are getting the same from left and right, but you know, we are going full stereo. Oh, and my feedback, I'm going to make it all the way down. So if I play this, this is what we get. We just get one single repetition and that's fine. That's you know what we want. So uh, the cross delay, what it's going to do is going is an offset. If I move all the way to the right, it's going to say R uh, 50 milliseconds. So this is what we'll do. It will send dry to the left, of course, but then a 50 milliseconds offset signal to the right. So now if I play it, this is what we get. It's a little bit different than before, right? So I'm going to go back to nothing, center. We get one single repetition, but it's going to be right as center. All the way to the right. We get one repetition in the right side, and then quickly after milliseconds, after, you know, 50 milliseconds, we get a repetition on the other side. And it's, you know, super short. If I do the same and go to the other side, it's the same, but, you know, backwards. It's like doing the swap in this case. But this is what it does. It's going to delay it in the right, but then it's going to send it to, you know, signal to the left, and but it's going to be with 50 milliseconds delay. And this is great, you know, maybe right now, just with this sound, it doesn't sound that good. But if I go up on the feedback and maybe... Notice that we get a very cool stereo width. Because we have a 50 millisecond delay, and which is, you know, sometimes maybe a little bit too much. If I narrow this to 20, it sounds super stereo. If I do nothing, everything is going to be mono, right? So super centered. So this is a cool way you get to expand the left and the right and just, you know, make it super wide. So changing the pong factor is going to, again, to give you something else. And if it's still, if I go to some, this is going to, it's going to give you something cool. Right? 
So all of the settings, you know, all of these options, there, there's things that you just need to fool around, uh, you know, with this a little bit. Because maybe this, again, is super dull. But maybe doing a little bit of cross delay is gonna give you, you know, something extra. All right, so that's pretty much the whole, you know, beat delay, the whole effect. And uh, this is a cool delay, but once you get, you know, you get to know it. Uh, at first, it's a little bit confusing. But once you get it, you know, you can re get really cool things by change, just changing the pong factor or the cross delay or the in panning and, you know, and, and the ping pong option that you have right here. But you need to understand, you know, what they do first. So if you now know how to use this uh, effect, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to the links at the description and you have the QRs on the screen. You can go to PayPal, you have Patreon or you have YouTube. Thanks if that is your thing. Right, so see you on the next one.